This is the election where, for the rest of your life, you will be asked what you did when Donald Trump rose. What did you do? How did you vote will be the first question. And if he is elected, the, f the next question will be, what did you do to stop it? What did you do beyond voting? What were you doing the weekend before? What were you doing six months before? Yeah. Uh, I, I tweeted something to that effect seven months ago or mm -hmm. so. Just a quick, well, I just, just that, you know, this will, this is the one you'll be asked about for the rest of your life. What did you do? And it got a massive response, uh, like nothing I'd tweeted in years. Uh, and, and, and so people feel that. They understand that something unique uh, has arisen and, and something that to at least half the country and possibly more, and we'll see, more than half the country, believes is fundamentally un-American. Yeah. This is not this is not John McCain, Barack Obama. That's this right. is not that choice. It's not uh, Romney, Barack Obama. It's not Bush Gore. It's, yeah. it's, it's not a thing we've ever seen. No one's ever asked you, how did you vote in 96 uh, on that Clinton versus Dole race? No one, it's, it's not the one that yeah. defines you because, because here is what this vote is. This is one of those votes in which you get to say something about yourself. Your vote isn't, isn't really about which top tax rate do you want. It isn't really about what international trade policy do you want at this point. This is a vote about yourself. This is a vote, a vote that says uh, when the fundamental principles of American government were challenged, this is where I stood. This is what I wanted to see America do. This is the way I wanted us to move. And so um, there, there's, you know, there, there's a, the, the Obama vote was a historic vote, and, and there will be people asking about it for the rest of time. Mm -hmm. and, and there was a, a, a profound importance to it. Um, this, this is a different thing. Yeah. Um, this, this is a vote that has a right and a wrong answer. Yeah, but you know, and the, the, the thing is, I got to focus on, on on your folks for just a second because in the end, the vast majority of African Americans are going to answer, "I did not vote for him." Right? The vast majority of Latinos are going to answer, "I did not vote for him." Um, at this point, the vast majority of women, particularly white uh, college-educated women, are going to answer, "I did everything I could to keep him out of the yeah. White House." But Donald Trump's hopes hinge on, quite frankly, white men mm -hmm. coming out in record numbers, and in, in, even if they're Democrats, voting for. A, a white guy, mm -hmm. for whatever reason, for a mix of reasons, are there enough white male voters who want what Donald Trump is selling to put him in the White House? Do you think? Statistically, that isn't possible. The white mm -hmm. male voter defended against Trump two ways. One is in the actual structure of the government, that the, the presidency is a, a fundamentally powerless position if you follow everything the Constitution says about it. In the uh, second half of the 20th century, the Congress decided, gee, war making is too politically sensitive. Let's just hand that to him. <laughs> Let's just get rid of it. Let him do whatever he wants. Right. We're afraid of that, right? Uh, but they could take it back. You know, they could, and, and so, uh, and you know, we've seen that uh, finally America has understood that, oh no, no, the president only nominates Supreme Court justices. He doesn't actually choose them, right. he nominates them. And then the United States Senate says, uh, okay. Uh, and so, you know, so the Congress has complete control over the executive and all, it, virtual complete control. That was a, a founding father's design, not trusting the executive. They overthrew a king because they didn't trust single head <laughs> governments, you know, and so they wanted this executive controlled. The other way they controlled democracy was to say, uh, only people like us can vote. And it wasn't just white men. It was property owners. That's right. They wanted learned voters mm -hmm. like themselves. There were property, there were poll taxes. There were all sorts of things that prohibited just, you know, the poor, white, uneducated mm -hmm. man from voting. And they couldn't vote because the founding fathers did not trust a judgment made by a population this big. Yeah. And so eventually over time we did. We decided to trust it more and more and more. Uh, and, and so we don't have that capacity to say, ah, you have failed our intelligence test. You don't get to, you don't get to vote next time. Uh, and then here now we've arrived in the 21st century at a presidential election that is 
a public intelligence test. Yeah, and it, it is a pass-fail intelligence test. 